Hi guys, this is Mark Zikri. Uh, this is my YouTube channel called Mr. Politics that I started recently where I could talk about uh, political issues. Uh, I'm very liberal and I've grown up liberal and these are my opinions, just my opinions. No one has to have the same opinions I do, but I have another channel called Mr. Sci-Fi where I post about science fiction, all this stuff behind me. And on that channel, I try to avoid speaking about political issues because science fiction is a big tent and everyone is welcome if, as long as they're not cruel and uh, try to come from compassion and empathy. But on Mr. Politics, I do um, um, take off that hat and put on another one or no hat on at, at, at this point. Hey, this is how I cut my own hair. Uh, but I did want to do this uh, this commentary and I, I'll uh, be doing a handful of commentaries moving forward for whoever wants to listen to them. But um, um, this one is entitled, I Can't Breathe. And I think it's very amazing that there's so many different events occurring simultaneously. And let, you, let me just walk you through my day yesterday. Uh, yesterday was a Saturday, I woke up, Elaine and I went to the park nearby where we uh, exercise for two hours, three, uh, three times a week. We wear gloves, I mean, completely covering our hands, we wear masks, and we avoid um, social contact, we keep social distancing. We have a trainer, but he keeps socially distant and wears a mask, and we lift weights and run and do all that stuff, and, um, <clears throat> you know, keeping healthy so that we can stay alive. But we're very aware that if we get, um, in our age group, if we get coronavirus, we could, we could possibly die. And one of the uh, key factors of uh, this disease, when you get it, if it's become serious, is you, you can't breathe. So I can't breathe is very much something someone with uh, a, str a bad case of coronavirus might um, say, and it might be the death of them as pneumonia, pneumonia sets in and so forth, and they're put on a ventilator, if there is even one available. So I can't breathe is very much a part of the coronavirus. Now also, we went home and we watched the launch of the astronauts, the two astronauts aboard, aboard the, uh, the Dragon, the, the SpaceX Dragon and Falcon 9. And that was an amazing event uh, for, for both of us, for Elaine and myself, because we grew up with the space race. It was very personal to us and to me particularly being a science fiction person. And, uh, and of course, they're risking their lives. They could explode on the pad, they could die. There's a lot that could happen despite precautions. And of course, when they get out in space, all they have to do is open the door and I can't breathe would very much be what they would say because um, there's a vacuum out there and we are, our planet is surrounded by a very, very thin membrane of atmosphere and everything else beyond there, we can't breathe it. And uh, so death is always very close at hand if you're not careful. Uh, so I can't breathe works as a statement for those guys potentially, and hopefully they don't say that because, uh, you know, we want them to be hale and hearty and, and healthy and we want to all get to Mars. Uh, Elon Musk, go Elon. But, um, but of course the, the key uh, expression of that phrase, sadly, is what just happened with George Floyd uh, and all the enormous um, number of black men and women who've been murdered by police over, over the years and the decades and the centuries. And so I wanted to talk about that because Elaine and I also uh, ended up yesterday at the protest at Pico and Fairfax, which is in our, our neighborhood. And uh, there were police cars on fire. There were thousands of people with signs uh, saying any number of things, including, of course, uh, Black Lives Matter and uh, I Can't Breathe and Justice for, for George Floyd. <sighs> so let me get into all of this because people, I think, get the wrong message. And I think there's, uh, it, what I try and do in my work and in my life is boil everything down to the simplest components to take complex things and make them as simple and clear as possible. And uh, I read history and all the time. I'm reading H.G. Uh, Wells' Outline of History Now. I just read recently The, the Rise and Fall of the Third Reich by William Shirer. Uh, great books, all both of them, and I've, I've all the way back to Herodotus, um, an ancient historian, one of the first historians. So I'm very aware that none of this stuff is new. None of this stuff is new. I mean, when Spartacus rebelled against Rome and led thousands of slaves uh, on a, on a, on a uh, simply uh, a journey to try to get their freedom, uh, the Roman army ultimately defeated them, and they crucified thousands of slaves, one per mile along the Appian Way leading all the way to Rome. So if you had been on the Appian Way, you would have seen, as far as the eye can see, men on, on, on crucifixes, on crosses, um, dying. 
And that was the exercise of power in the pursuit of injustice, greed, self-interest. Um, and that's what we have now. It's what we have now. Uh, here's what's going on. And it's really simple. When people say, well, all lives matter, not just black lives, that's not the point. That's not the point. What they're saying is that my life matters. My life matters. If you just see out of other people's eyes, if you just have empathy, it's no one deserves. I mean, think about this. Let, let's, let's put this in the context. This guy has a fake $20 bill. He goes to buy cigarettes. They call the cops and he ends up murdered by the cops. Okay, no one stopped it. No one said, hey, wait a minute, let's, this is not right. I mean, people were saying that, but no one took action because these men had guns, the police. And the police, the three other officers, didn't see fit to say to their compatriot who was acting out of, um, out of insane overreaction, um, don't do that. And they, they were the ones who should have more than anyone else. But what would have happened if I had taken a 20 and gone around the corner to Astro Burger and tried to buy a, um, a hamburger with it? Okay, or in my case, a veggie burger. Uh, would they have called the cops on me? Would I have ended up dead? No. What would have happened was they would have said, oh, this bill's fake. They would have run it and they said, this bill's fake. Oh, I, and I would have said, oh, well, I just got that out of the ATM and, you know, I'll, I'll go back, back to my bank with it. Here, um, take my credit card and run it up on my ATM card, you know, or here's another 20. Um, and that would have been the end of it. I would have gotten my burger. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have end up dead. And I would have gone home. Why? Well, they know me, but also I'm white. Uh, not really white, I'm Jewish, but you know, I can pass as white. And, uh, you know, I mean, uh, previous generations, my family was exterminated by the Nazis, so it depends on who's the scapegoat at any given time. But, uh, but, but right now, I, I uh, you know, don't, I don't, I probably will not end my life being murdered by the police, okay? Black people can't say that. Black people can't say that. Anytime they're pulled over for like a busted taillight or uh, anything, well, you know, I, I feel very nervous around police and I didn't know why, you know, it's like I would, when I see police, I try not to make eye contact. I feel very uncomfortable. I didn't know why. And then some years ago, um, my dad and my brother, Steve and I were uh, having a meal and I mentioned this and my, my dad said, oh, well, that's because when you were little, I took you to the police uh, station and had them lock you up in a cell to let you know what it would be like if you um, chose, you know, didn't stay on the straight and narrow. And so I had this traumatic memory that I no longer remembered, but I had the sense memory of it, of the fact that any, you know, that, that at any moment I could be put in a cell, I could be um, arrested by the cops. And so cops are scary to me. Cops are scary to me. I don't see them as my pals, but, I'm, but they are. That's the thing. There are many great cops. There are many great people. When my car was stolen, my, my, my Toyota, the cops showed up. They, and they, by that night, they'd caught the guy in my car and I got my car back. Never thought that would happen. And they were kind and good for them, good for them. But there is a natural human reaction to injustice, to this isn't right. And if there is nothing you can do to stop it from continuing, you feel impotence, you feel rage, you feel all, that's humanity, that's natural, and it's right to feel that. Because if, like when my family was rounded up and, and put in a, in a gas chamber and, and exterminated, that was injustice, and there was nothing they could do about it. My grandfather left before that happened. He was going to be drafted by the Russian army, and everyone knew the Jews died in the Russian army. This is before the revolution during the time of the Tsar. He joined the American forces fighting World War I, became a cook, and ultimately came to Chicago, brought my aunt and my grandmother over, and my mother was born in Chicago. If he had not done that, my, my grandfather, my grandmother, my aunt, and my uh, mom would have all been exterminated. And so this is not a casual thing to me. Anyone who is facing injustice, this is power exercising and s securing its own safety, exercising power in its own safety. The cops, the military, these are not people uh, being sent out to <clears throat> do anything other than maintain power. And, and the people who are saying these other cops should be arrested, they're right, they're absolutely right. Any cop who kills an unarmed person should be put on trial. He should lose his job unless there's incredible, incredible mitigating circumstances. But any time a cop kills someone who's in handcuffs, they should be tried for murder. It's that simple. It's that simple. 
and and children being put in cages, all of these things. I was put in a cage. I know how that felt, even though I don't remember it. It's left its, its ripple effect on me. So here's, here's what I want to say to anyone who thinks those people are burning things. Yeah, I, you know, no one should break into a store. No one should, should rob it. But most of those people who are protesting aren't doing that. It's kids. Look at who's, look at who's running off with tennis shoes. You know, it's, it's kids. It's kids. Kids do stupid things. There's a wonderful thing that Steven Spielberg did that I wanted to pass along. It was that um, when Schindler's List was shown uh, in a multiplex when it first came out, a, a, a group of... Uh, uh, black teenagers were, were on a field trip for their school and they were put in to watch that film with no preamble. And so they started laughing at it. They started making jokes and it was a shame and it was all across the headlines. You know, black kids have no empathy. They, they, they don't, they, they're laughing at the Holocaust, blah, blah, blah. That wasn't the case at all. So, so Spielberg said, let me have a meeting with these kids. So he sat down with these kids and he said to them, look, I was a teenager once too. I would go to movies and make, you know, jokes and rude comments. That's what kids do. You guys, it's not racism. It's not anti-Semitism. You know, you guys were, were dropped in with no preamble. Let me tell you about the Holocaust. And then let me find out from you what kind of movie you'd like to see. And they were astonished because they thought he was going to condemn them, this millionaire from, from Hollywood coming. And he was just a guy understanding that they were just kids, you know? And, and so they said, well, what we'd like to see is we'd like to see a, a movie about about slavery. Why don't you make a movie about slavery? So we made Amistad. And for me, that's what you should do when you encounter other people who are just people. We're all just people. And if you can come with compassion, if you can come with empathy, if you can come with patience, but most of all, if you can come with an understanding that if, if an injustice is done against anyone, it's an injustice against you. And what we need is to get rid of politicians who don't have empathy. I saw a photo of Mike Pence looking at these men in cages, uh, who are these, these illegal aliens, and he could have been looking at a blank wall. There was nothing. And, and Trump is the same thing. He is a man incapable of empathy. He is a, and so whether you're a Trump supporter, whether you're a Pence supporter, irrelevant. It, is cruelty the thing that's functioning in the land is cruelty and sensitivity. We can go on and on, but what we need to do is when there's an injustice, we need to speak out. We need to, and if others are speaking out, we need to say, you're, I'm, I'm with you, you know? And we need to change the laws and we need to change the people making the laws. You know, it's in, uh, to have a trial with no evidence, no witnesses allowed, like the impeachment that Trump had recently, that's wrong. There's no other person in the world other than some person who's a dictator that would have that happen. These kids who are, who are being arrested on the street, they're not going to have a, 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 you know, they'll either, they'll have to take a plea or pay a fine or whatever, maybe go to jail, you know, I mean, maybe go to prison. But, you know, they need their day in court. They need fair justice and fair justice starts at the top. And uh, I'm sorry that Bernie dropped out of the race. I, you know, Biden is, you know, um, sort of daughtery grandpa guy. And uh, I don't think he's actively evil, but I think he's not the right man in the right time at the right place. Um, so, you know, in terms of solutions, and I think solutions are where everything starts, um, it can get better. Barack Obama did get elected. Um, you know, Kennedy was assassinated, but that brought about the voting rights bill, you know, and uh, Lyndon Johnson was wrong on Vietnam, but he was right on civil rights. And, uh, you know, Nixon got, got thrown out. He had to quit, thank God. He was terrible, I remember him. Um, you know, justice can prevail. Martin Luther King got murdered, but things got better. You have black people in all walks of life now. You have, you know, Trump's brought back overt racism. It's allowed, it's, it's made, it's the power, power elite has said, you know, I mean, by, and I shouldn't use the word power elite. What I mean is, people are always being called to either rise to their best selves or their worst selves. And Martin Luther King was right, the right man in the right place at the right time. And, uh, and even Malcolm X saw before he died, when he went to Mecca, that people of all races and of all backgrounds could meet together and be treated as equals. And that's really all we're talking about. If you see someone getting a raw deal, if you see someone being, um, I mean, people are not being able to pay their rents now. People are not be able to, being able to buy food now. Uh, that's because the government is not acting 
uh, fairly or competently. And I'm fine, I'm okay, but, but I recognize that many of my neighbors are not. Um, there's a girl in the park that I was talking to who can't afford her rent, so she's bought a van and she's gonna head up the coast and live in her van with her dog. Is that what should be happening in America? I mean, what about the people who can't afford a van? You know, um, it's not right. So we need people who care in power. We need people who don't look the other way. If you're kind, if you're compassionate, do it on a daily basis to people, talk to people, help people, you know, keep, protect yourself, stay safe, but don't turn a blind eye to what's wrong. Don't turn a blind eye to what's unfair. The people in the streets are not wrong. They're burning buildings, but even the ones who are burning buildings, I mean, who knows why they're doing that? It's, it gets attention, it gets coverage. There aren't outside agitators, it's nonsense, it's, it's, it's crap. You know, it's people not knowing how to get justice because they aren't getting justice. And the fact that I can't breathe is another, I mean, you know, I still remember the video of the guy who was just selling individual cigarettes and ended up dead. And he said, I can't breathe. Are these, are these reasons to murder people? The guy goes for a jog, gets murdered, you know, and the people who do it are let off until it hits the, hits the internet. You know, it's all about just, you know, people, I mean, Jesus hung out with prostitutes. He hung out with, with lower class people. He wasn't hanging out with, the, with the, the rich guys. And there was a reason, because the rich can take care of themselves. They're fine, they're okay, you know? But the poor, the needy, the hungry, the sick, you know, that's, that's us. The, the least of us must be cared to, must be treated with value. You know, my best conversations have been with people from every walk of life. I don't, you know, as I say, I don't need people to agree with me, but I do need people to act with compassion and put themselves out and make the effort. I don't think this government will um, solve the problem, but fortunately people grow old and die. And then you get newer people in with newer ideas. And, uh, you know, my, on my card it says Ocasio-Cortez 2024. <laughs> You know, and again, if you're if you're a um, conservative, that doesn't mean that you can't act with compassion. If you love Trump, fine, fine, love Trump, but but don't view these people out in the streets as anything else than a hurting heart, because they know that their children, their loved ones, they themselves, any time of the day or night, could be killed by forces that should not be in that position, should not be allowed to do that. So speak up, be kind, be brave, you know, that's it. So, um, so that's all for now, but I just really wanted to say that. And um, it's a little bit rambling. I'm a little bit tired today, but, um, but there'll be more on, on these things. I'm gonna be posting a few more of these Mr. Politics um, videos just to talk about this stuff. Um, you know, I, I go out of my way to be kind in, in my life, in my work, in my world. And that's because I was raised by a compassionate person. And um, so I don't see other people as the enemy. And uh, in, in Space Command, in, in my fictional TV show, I have a woman named Anoka Chandamal who's from Sri Lanka and she's a peace activist. And she, her basic message is that we are all humanity. We are all one. And the motto of her, she says, we, we cannot wait for our, our leaders to save us, to heal the world, to do the things that need to be done. And her motto is sanity at last. And I think that's what we all need to embrace and um, not look to sanity from our leaders. If they're insane, they're insane, but we must not be insane. And sanity comes from your heart, from your head, from your hand, what you do, who you are, what you say, what you think. So that's about it for now. Thanks for being here. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye guys.